Let us pause and consider God's point of view. God is outside time and space, for God created both. When we pray, God hears us. When the time is right, God responds. When we pray, God knows our needs. When his time is right, God meets our needs. Let us come to God in prayer now. Lord, we meet to worship and to bring our prayers. Teach us to be patient as we wait for your response. We know that you hear all our prayers, however they are made and whoever we are. Give us faith to trust your awesome love and care for us. Amen. The first song today is There's a Light That I See, Bread of Life. Do sing along if you know it, or just listen to the words. There's a light that I see In spite of the darkness that surrounds me And the light that I see Only comes alive every time I hear your voice There's a joy that I have in spite of the sorrow that surrounds me And the joy that I have Only comes alive every time I hear your voice There's a peace deep down in my soul In spite of the crisis that surrounds me And the peace in my soul only comes alive every time I hear your voice. <laughs>
from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 18. One day, Jesus told his disciples a story to show that they should always pray and never give up. There was a judge in a certain city, he said, who neither feared God nor cared about people. A widow of that city came to him repeatedly, saying, Give me justice in this dispute with my enemy. The judge ignored her for a while, but finally he said to himself, I don't fear God or care about people, but this woman is driving me crazy. I'm going to see that she gets justice because she's wearing me out with her constant requests. Then the Lord said, Learn a lesson from this unjust judge. Even he rendered a just decision in the end. So don't you think that God will surely give justice to his chosen people who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will grant justice to them quickly. But when the Son of Man returns, how many will he find on the earth who have faith? On uh, Sunday, I was uh, looking at uh, how this passage um, works and uh, how what Jesus says about uh, praying and never giving up is uh, something that's about developing a relationship with God and learning to be those who uh, relate to him. I was uh, more referring to that in uh, the uh, two churches of Emin and Hook rather than here in Rawcliffe because we had a, a special service here. Uh, but uh, in that never giving up praying, we develop our conversation. And sometimes uh, we don't get the answer we want. And I, I mentioned that uh, in the uh, passage that uh, my, th my theological teachers wouldn't be very happy with, uh, with uh, Jesus for the way he does this uh, story because he kind of makes links uh, between God and an unjust judge. And you think, you don't really want God related to an unjust judge. But Jesus does contradict that, and he does point out that God is not an unjust judge, that God is not like the unjust judge, he says. And so he does notice what he said, and he does try to make sure that we understand God is not like that, that he will give us justice quickly. 
Sometimes it doesn't feel like that, and sometimes uh, we don't seem to get the answer we want quickly, and we thought about that on Sunday. Uh, but the idea of justice, and that justice will be something that God is going to bring, is an important one for us to grasp hold of, and to be those who live with, that God is a just judge, that he looks at the uh, world and he makes the right decisions about things and he doesn't operate unfairly as some may seem to do. And particularly in uh, his day and age, many of those who were in power uh, were corrupt, operated in their own ways, uh, looked after their own and did what gave them the most money. God is not like that. God sees the needs of everybody and he judges justly and fairly because he knows our hearts. God knows what's going on inside us, not just what we're putting on the surface. And because of that, he is able to properly judge and make right judgments. And actually, um, we talk about him bringing justice. There are two kinds of uh, elements to that. One is creating a just society. The other is a judgment about what and where we've done and, and how we're going to have behaved. And all of those second ones uh, come about at the end of time. And so they're not the ones that uh, Jesus will be talking about here, although God will judge justly at the end of time. He will look at us and say, I can see what your motives were. I can understand why you sometimes weren't able to fulfill your motives. You had the right motives, but you weren't able to uh, function as you would have wanted to do because this, that, and the other. He can see that whatever we've done uh, will, is well and clear to him. And of course, his judgment is not one uh, that defines whether we will go to heaven or not. That is down to uh, Jesus and the work that Jesus has done in forgiving us our sins. So we are already assured of our passage to heaven. The justice he's looking at, the judgments he's making is about which of the good things we've done will continue with us into the next life. What of the things that we've done will be burned up and which of those things will continue as uh, living and lively things. But the second justice, the justice of community, the justice of creating a, a world where the poor are better looked after, where the rich don't just get away with it, where the, mis the misfortune of birth is not uh, something that permanently scars the way that you are, is not just uh, something that happens because God does it, but something that happens because we listen to God and are part of his kingdom. And his justice in that respect comes about as we are the ones who make it happen. And we need to be in that praying relationship with God so that we will respond and make sure that justice happens, that the world is a better place, that our community is a better place, that things are not continuing to go on which shouldn't have continued to go on. And that's not always easy. We can see that in the way that the slave trade uh, continued for 1800 years after uh, Jesus died and still does continue to this day. And that we haven't yet address, addressed that uh, but for 1800 years, the church wasn't even trying to address that. Uh, but now we are. And now we're standing with those who are uh, being abused into slavery. But also we can see that about the way that poverty continues and the way that we are not creating uh, as just a society as we should. So we are challenged by this to be uh, effectively his hands and his voice, those who seek to make things operate in the way that he would want. And we pray that God may help us to be that, knowing that he can see us and support us, knowing that he will enable us to function to the best, and knowing that if we ask, he will not 
uh, hang back from bringing about his change. We need to ask him to help us to make that change happen. We pray that God may do that for us and that we may be those who respond. Amen. So we now have a, an opportunity to uh, reflect for ourselves and we're going to have a, a piece of music uh, which uh, speaks of our commitment to God and our willingness to be those who uh, respond to him. The piece is called Breathe. You may know it. You may want to sing along. You may want to just uh, listen to the words or use the music to uh, just pause and take your own mind wherever God takes you and respond to him at any needs that you know you want that it's around that we might want to be addressing and making more just and fair. So we uh, listen to this piece, breathe, and either sing along or respond to God as we do so.
So as we respond to God, we're aware that we don't always bring his justice into being and so we come to him and confess our sins. Lord, forgive us when we have closed our eyes to the things that matter. When we have prioritized the trivial surface matters over urgent needs and deep-seated injustice. Forgive us when we have chosen to look away from those who need us the most. Forgive us when we have stretched ourselves so thin that we do not have time and energy for that which you call us to do and to be. Forgive us and restore us, we pray. Give us what we need to live, love, and pray persistently. In the power and counsel of your Spirit. Amen. Loving God, we know that you hear us. You not only hear us, you accept us as your children, surrounding us with grace and forgiveness. Thank you for your unconditional love. Amen. A prayer of praise and thanksgiving. Lord, thank you that you are a place of help. Whether where others fail us and circumstances change, you remain and you are unchanging. Your love supports us, underpinning us with a strength beyond ourselves. We praise you for your passion for justice, for your kindness towards your people. We thank you that you call us to a life-giving existence that we may give and receive in your name, learning your ways and caring for your world. Amen. We pray for our world, its people and ourselves. Lord, we bring before you a world in need of justice. We hear so many voices clamoring to be heard. The poor, the sick, the bereaved, the ill-treated, and we ask that you will hear their pleas. Help us to discern, discern those to which we might respond. We pray that there will be shelter for the homeless, health care for the sick, aid for the poor, loving concern for the bereaved, and hope. Hope of kingdom values being established here and now amid the tangled webs of our mixed motives and the world we have messed up with our selfishness. Help us, Lord, to be part of the answer to our own prayers. Amen. And we say the Lord's Prayer. Uh, what we've done in the last couple of weeks is that uh, we've given the option of saying the Lord's Prayer in whatever way you'd like, in whatever language you'd like, uh, so you can use any version you'd like. Uh, I'm going to use the words in orange, but say the Lord's Prayer as you wish. Our Dad in heaven above, let everyone look up to you and the area where you and charge grow. May what you want to happen on earth as perfectly as it does in heaven. Please give to us what we need for today. Forgive us when we think or do wrong things, just as we don't hold it against those who hurt us. Guide us away from whatever we might want, but is unhelpful to us, and protect us from all that is nasty and destructive. For you are in charge of everything. You have the power to do it, and you are awesome. You always were, you are now, and always will be. Amen. Our final uh, song is one that you'll know the chorus of, uh, and you may know the words of, uh, and uh, you may not know uh, the, uh, may not uh, know this style of uh, representation, but hopefully you'll enjoy it. This is a song, an old hymn from the 30s. Mm -hmm. 
I don't think they played it this way. Could I serve a risen savior? Let's join together in this prayer. Lord, our God, you promise to stay awake. You protect us. You hear all our prayers. You want us to keep talking to you. You're God of everything, and we look up to you. Bless us as we trust in you. Send us out to live and work and pray. In Jesus' name, amen. And may 
each of your hearts be at peace and your mind be at rest. May you be confident in who you are and share God's gifts of light, hope and grace with those you meet and those you pray for. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and all whom you love this day and evermore.